Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, uh, and frankly, for the first time, uh, as he's going now through a national campaign, for the first time in his life, he is experiencing all sorts of scrutiny from the press, uh, and frankly, it's kind of the type of scrutiny that he has managed to avoid while he was in other campaigns in the, the deep, dark, blue state of Minnesota. But now that it's national, there's a lot of things coming out in the open for which he's having to give an account. Things like now, we're finding out more than 30 trips that he has taken to China, including, catch this, including a honeymoon vacation that he went to China, and it was timed with the fifth anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. Now, some of you won't remember that. Uh, those my age or more, you will. But that was a crackdown against pro-democracy protesters, and China came down hard on them. Tim Waltz goes there for a honeymoon five years after the on the anniversary, five years of that. It's amazing. So does Tim Waltz somehow cozy up with China simply because he's naive, or is there more behind all of this? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Seamus Bruner. He's the director of research at the Government Accountability Institute and also the author of the book, Controligarchs, Exposing the Billionaire Class, Their Secret Deals, and the Globalist Plot to Dominate Your Life. He recently published an article in Breitbart with the headline, Seven Troubling Tim Waltz Connections to Communist China. Wow. Seamus, thank you for joining us. Again, on Washington Watch, always great to have you. Hey, Jody, it's great to be with you. Uh, you know, the stolen valor stuff is a total disgrace. We're finding out more and more examples of times that Tim Walls misrepresented his rank, tried to insinuate that he was actually deployed to a war zone. And so pretending to be a war hero is a disgrace. But it's even worse, more egregious uh, when you consider the fact that, uh, that Tim Walls has been cozying up to America's number one adversary for going on 30 years, 30 plus years. And so uh, if you start at the beginning in 1989, Tim Walls was in China. He then promptly sets up a uh, company called Educational Travel Adventures Incorporated and begins taking American students to China. And he has nothing but uh, effusive praise to lavish on uh, the Chinese. And he tells his students on these trips, he's taken more than 30, which is bizarre in and of itself, how many uh, uh, governors of states in America have taken 30 plus trips to China, but he tells his students on these trips, downplay, quote, downplay your, an, your Americanness. Don't try to make it seem like you're an American patriot here. Um, and so what does he get from the Chinese Communist Party? Well, they start subsidizing these trips. This was reported in local press. The CCP actually paid for scholarships to bring uh, Walls and his students to China for these cultural exchanges or whatever they're calling them. Um, that's just shocking. I mean, I've talked to multiple U.S. intelligence uh, experts here that say there is a 0% chance that Tim Walls in the uh, Ministry of State Security, that's the, the China's version of the CIA, there's no chance that China's CIA didn't know about these trips, approved these trips, and uh, basically he was doing what they wanted. Wow. Well, and that's just like you said, that's just the beginning of it. There's also uh, visits with uh, uh, diplomats from the CCP uh, and even some of them attending his gubernatorial inauguration. Uh, that is pretty alarming. Why would they be there for his inauguration? Tell us some about those trips and those relationships. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's uh you know, the Team Walls, Team Harris, they would like to downplay and make it sound like it was ancient history. All these uh, trips that he took were back in the 90s. That's not true. He, he traveled as recently as 2015, and then he has his eyes set on higher office, national office. Uh, and so he's a congressman. But when he becomes governor at his inauguration in January of 2019, 
uh, there's a CCP delegation, a, a consul general attends this. Now, you can't just show up to someone's inauguration. You have to be invited. And so Tim Walls or his team invited this, this diplomat. And then that, uh, that consul general, he travels from the inauguration. He congratulates Walls on the win. He says he can't wait to uh, form more lasting ties between the state of Minnesota and China. And uh, then that, that uh, diplomat, he travels to a local NGO called Global Minnesota. Now, this is, I mean, stocked full of Tim Walls cronies. They invite Tim Walls to give speeches. It's kind of a globalist organization, Global Minnesota, and the diplomat meets with them. And that organization is partnered with another pro-Walls organization called the Chinese American Association of Minnesota, which is hosting, housing a secret police station. This was reported in the Daily Caller. They call them overseas service centers. But basically, Beijing has at least seven that we know of throughout the United States secret police stations. And so what do these things do? They go and round up and harass and intimidate former Chinese citizens who have immigrated to the United States as dissidents or asylum seekers, people critical of the Communist Party, these service centers harass them, intimidate them and their families. And so one of them is operating right out of Minnesota, the Twin Cities, and is close with Tim Walls. I mean, they've promoted Tim Walls uh, before. And so that's shocking. And then the last thing I'll say here is Tim Walls has been invited as a keynote speaker to numerous, at least three that we know of, maybe four uh, that we know of, events that are backed by the Chinese and uh, Communist Party's intelligence apparatus apparatus. These are called United Front Groups. They're basically an arm of the intelligence uh, apparatus in Beijing. And Tim Walls is a keynote speaker. We don't know if he got paid or if he just did it out of uh, charity or kindness of his heart. But it's nonetheless disturbing. We've never seen a governor with such cozy ties to the communists in Beijing. Wow. You know, Seamus, I never even knew that there was some sort of secret police that is, is Chinese here in the United States, and they're going around intimidating dissidents, who individuals who have left China. But when you say that, those people have left China to come to the United States for freedom, for liberty. And here, are you saying we have a secret police here, in this case, in Minnesota, that Governor Walls knew about, and he allowed them to intimidate and harass those individuals who fled communist China to come here to the United States for liberty? Well, the first thing we learned about these, they're called overseas service centers. They're operated by the Chinese Communist Party. The first thing we learned about them is that the Justice Department busted one in April of 2023. And so all of that activity has been uh, according to the Justice Department. And so they, they identified several more. Seven is the number that we have. Uh, one is in Los Angeles, uh, New York, Chicago, all the big cities. But what's so strange is that one of these service centers is operated out of Minnesota. I mean, you kind of wonder what the heck does Minnesota have to do with China? And that's what makes Tim Walls such a such a you know person worthy of further investigation is there is one of these. It's operating out of the Chinese American uh, American Association of Minnesota. This was broken by the Daily Caller. And, you know, we don't know it all that much about its activities, but we do know that the Justice Department has indicted a, a different overseas service center for exactly those activities, harassing and intimidating dissidents. Wow. I tell you, that's, that's unbelievably uh, disturbing. And of course, all along the way, there's been, a, I, I think, at least in my opinion, a, a long history of uh, the governor making, uh, is it fair to say outlandishly pro- Communist China comments, um, I, but but that's accurate, isn't he? I mean, he has been pro-China for a long time to the point of kind of being outlandish with it all. Yeah, that's right, Jody. I mean, going back to the very beginning when he came back from his first trip, he said it was the greatest experience of his life that he was given so many gifts by his uh, Chinese benefactors that he couldn't even bring them all home. He uh, 
he's given uh, what the CCP calls big help with a little bad mouth, where occasionally he'll sprinkle in some comments about human rights abuses, very generic stuff. For example, on the uh, 20th anniversary of Tiananmen Square, he was a congressman at the time, and he, he gives a statement where all these people are criticizing Tiananmen Square, calling it a massacre. He never called it a massacre. And by, you know, some, some estimates in the West, per, credible estimates in the West, up to 10,000 uh, Chinese protesters were killed during the Tiananmen Square massacre. It, it, n numbers into the thousands, at least. He never called it a massacre. And here's the most shocking thing that he did. He drew a moral equivalence from the Tiananmen Square massacre to an event that happened in the United States over 100 years ago, the, the Wounded Knee Massacre, where 38 Native Americans tragically, I mean, nobody is going to defend Wounded Knee, but 38 Native Americans were murdered. And Tim Walls on the floor of Congress says, you know, well, in, in China, some people did something, but we've got our own problems too, Wounded Knee. And then he spends more time talking about Wounded Knee than he does the Tiananmen Square massacre. And so that's just one example. There are dozens and dozens of examples of quotes where he just praises China. He, he tacitly uh, praised their police state by saying when he came back from China, he was shocked that there's no crime. Yeah, that's because they round everybody up. They use facial recognition software and they throw them into camps, even if they're not lawbreakers. They've got the social credit score. So you never hear him talk about social credit scores in China or how about the fentanyl that they're shipping to our shores or any of the other things that they have done. It's all very muted criticism. All right. Everybody needs to be taking this information in. This is uh, exceedingly alarming. And, and underneath all of this, Wall says that there's uh, areas of cooperation between the U.S. and China. Uh, Seamus, let me ask you this. Is he deliberately naive about the human rights abuses of the communist regime, or is there something else underneath here that is forcing him to cozy up with China? Well, that's what we're digging to get to the bottom of. We know he had this company, uh, Educational Travel Adventures, Inc. He's now shut that company down once he joined Congress. But we're looking into his campaign contributions. Uh, and we're following the money. We'll have a full cash analysis to find out if any money from Beijing has gone to Congressman Walls. That's our motto here is to follow the money. Um, you know, I can say at a preliminary look at his finances, he hasn't done that well, um, you know, not as a criticism, but he, you know, he doesn't own a home anymore. He sold his home. He doesn't own any stocks or bonds. Um, and so it's, it's tricky, but we're getting into the campaign contributions. And the bottom line is, is that Walls and Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and all of these high ranking progressives, they're all pretty uh, muted on China. Every once in a while, they'll have a criticism. But we find time and again, especially with the Biden family, they had business deals with China. And that is why they don't speak so uh, strongly in condemnations of the human rights. Yeah, and it appears as though, and I'm sure your investigation will, will dive into this, but it appears as though a similar compromise exists with Walls, where he openly claims that he got gifts and gifts and gifts and gifts, more than he could bring home or however it, exactly it, it, it was stated. But the fact is there appears to be a compromise there. This, of course, is a message that the Trump Vance campaign is focused on, everything from bringing manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. to uh, to understanding the threat that China poses. Is this an issue, the threat of China, something that a Harris Walls administration can be trusted to secure? Yeah, absolutely not, uh, Jody. It's it's tr it's really troubling. A lot of Americans, you know, good patriotic Americans can't fathom the fact that the elite political class in Washington, and this includes members on both sides, actually like China. They actually admire the Chinese system. I talk about it in the, the book Control Agarks. Uh, people like Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci, they, they praise the Chinese system. They love, I mean, they use euphemisms like efficiency. They love the efficiency, which means brutal crackdowns on dis dissent. Uh, but they, they actually admire a Chinese system. And I, and I see that uh, Kamala Harris and, and Tim Walls, I mean, just look at their COVID policies. They wanted to lock people in their homes. Uh, Governor Walls, he... 
He uh, put up a tip line so that neighbors could be snitching on one another. That's something that Mao would do is have, you know, turn in your neighbors uh, to the party. And so it's actually, it's troubling. I mean, people can't fathom that in America, communism is coming here. But I mean, again, go to Tim Walz's own statements. He says uh, some people's socialism is other people, people's neighborliness. So he, he equates socialism to neighborliness. So wow. um, it's really shocking stuff. It really is. And I would think with all of that, it's probably safe to assume that the Chinese Communist Party would prefer Donald Trump not return to the White House. Uh, thank you so much, Seamus Bruner, uh, Director of Research at the Government Accountability Institute. Incredible conversation. Thank you for joining us.